Hi, welcome to Party Food Hero. I'm Aaron. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than we normally do. So we're going to do an experiment. We're going to find out what's the best breading for mozzarella sticks. It's going to be your standard breading. We're going to try Cheetos. We're going to try Doritos, um, pork rinds, uh, and let's see which one ends up being the best. Let's check it out. Alright, for this recipe you're going to need heavy whipping cream, pork rinds, Doritos, Cheetos, breadcrumbs, flour, Parmigiano Reggiano, some eggs, some string cheese or mozzarella, the dry kind, um, or anything else you might want to experiment with putting on your mozzarella sticks. And you got to try one of the Cheetos as well. You are going to crack three of your eggs into a container doesn't really matter something that's going to be big enough for you to do the breading of the mozzarella sticks so you don't want to put it in some really small bowl that's going to be tough to bread the mozzarella sticks because this is the wet part of the breading so you want enough room to do that next you're going to add in some heavy whipping cream all right then you're going to make sure you get all that heavy whipping cream out of your measuring cup Next, you are going to whisk this all together very well. You don't want any chunks of egg in there or egg-free heavy whipping cream. So just mix it all really well together as seen here on your television or phone or tablet or wherever you're watching this. Now you're going to add some salt and pepper to your flour. How much you add in, I don't know, it's to taste. So right after you put this in, mix it in and then taste the flour, make sure it tastes good. I'm just kidding, really don't do that. That would be disgusting. So do about that much, I don't know, uh, like a teaspoon maybe, I don't know. Just just around that amount. <laughs> I know, this is very precise. Um, but yeah, so you're gonna salt and pepper your flour, just gives a little more flavor to the breading when that's all finished. Then you're gonna mix that in really well with a mixing fork now panko breadcrumbs don't have any flavor on their own so what i'm doing is adding my some of my favorite barbecue seasoning to this um just to give it a little more flavor and then you just mix that in you can use whatever you can use italian seasoning you can use whatever you want i'm using barbecue seasoning because i like barbecue seasoning and then next you're going to add in some Parmigiano Reggiano. Now there's no law about how much Parmesan Reggiano you can put in your panko breadcrumbs, but I like to put a lot because Parmesan Reggiano is delicious. And so I put a lot in and you can see how much I'm putting in. Uh, I'll put in the description below how much I put in or an estimate because I didn't measure it, but it'll be a oh, accurate yucky. estimate. Then you mix in the cheese very well. All right, so what I did is I took my Cheetos, Doritos, and pork rinds and put them in a Ziploc bag and just smashed it all really good. You start with your fist, and then you go to a metal mallet tender or a beef tenderizer, whatever it's called, and then you hit it even, make it even finer. Now, the problem that I found out with doing it this way was the pieces didn't get small enough. I was gonna do it in a food processor originally and I thought I wouldn't like how it turned out. It would be too powdery, but it turned out in order for the Cheetos, Doritos, and I always wanna say Chicharronas. They're not, the Chicharronas are Spanish, uh, pork rinds. The pork rinds, um, you have to have them almost in a powder form or it doesn't stick well enough to the batter. Uh, when you're when you're battering them for to deep fry them, so uh, this is fine, I guess, if it's as a starting point. But you're really just wasting a Ziploc bag. I didn't film myself doing the part where I put it in a put it in a food processor, but you can skip this step unless you really like doing this. It's a good little exercise. Um, and then yeah, so you want to get this as fine as you can. Do it in a food processor if you have one, or if not, spend a lot more time making this smaller 
You're welcome. You're going to want to set up your station like this. So you have your cheese, your flour, your egg mixture, and then your breading. And I try to do this where I did dry hand, wet hand is the technique you're supposed to do. I kept mixing it up. And so if you can figure out a way so you only use one hand is for the wet part and one hand is for the dry part, you'll... And that was my youngest daughter coming in to say hi. Anyway, so if you can do it, so you keep your hands as clean as possible, it's great. But once I started kind of getting in the rhythm of doing it, I kept forgetting which hand was the dry hand, which one was the wet hand. And I inevitably had to wash my hands several times. But it still comes out great just doing it this way. You might, you might get your hands dirty, but you're going to make yourself a delicious mozzarella stick. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about with the Cheetos, Doritos, and everything not being crushed up enough. Uh, you could see those chunks of the mozzarella showing through. If I would have deep fried it like that, that would have just melted into the hot oil. So that's why you need to use a food processor, blend it up almost into a powder, and then use that as the coating. Which I did, and I will show you now show you what it looks like after I put it through the food processor because I didn't record the food processor part. I'm so sorry. So I already recoded the original Cheeto mozzarella stick and you can see how much better that looks. There's no mozzarella showing through. I know when I deep fry it, it's not going to melt into the hot oil and it didn't. So that's what it looks like and that's what you, that's what you got to do. It's going to be great. It's going to be the best, the best, the best mozzarella stick you've ever had. Spot on drum. Okay, I almost forgot one of the most important parts of this until I was re-watching this video. You have to double coat these. So you're going to do flour, egg wash, coating, and then you're going to put it back in the egg wash and then do the coating again, as you see. So I got that all coated up, put it back in the egg wash, and then you put it back in the Cheetos or whatever the coating is going to be. And that will ensure no leakage of the mozzarella cheese into the hot oil. That's how you got to do it. So I hope you watched this whole video before you went out and made this and made the horrible mistake of not double breading it or double Cheetoing or Doritoing or pork grinding it. And just like that, you're done. Now, once you're done, you're going to put these in the freezer for three to four hours. You want the mozzarella to be frozen before you put it in the deep fryer. Set your oil to 375 degrees if you have a deep fryer. If you don't, uh, you can do this in a pot that's deep enough to fry it. Just make sure you have it at 375 degrees before you throw them in. You don't want to overcrowd it. When you're doing this, so it'll drop the heat of the oil too low and it won't cook quickly enough. And then you'll have kind of soggy or oily mozzarella sticks. And nobody likes oily mozzarella sticks. Look how good those sticks look, by the way. Beautiful. I just did a little test to make sure it was hot enough. Or maybe I just accidentally put it in. You'll never know. Now you're going to put them into the hot oil for about three minutes until they get a kind of darker brown not dark brown but medium dark brown i don't know just keep an eye on them it's going to take around three minutes maybe a minute more minute less um but yeah just just don't walk away stay there until they're done take them out and then you're going to put them on a paper towel lined tray so it drains off that extra grease so then they're healthy look at look at those legs until they look about like this, like that. So obviously the panko breadcrumbs are gonna darken more than anything, but that's the perfect color you want them at. Notice not a lot of leakage of mozzarella coming out. That's because we double battered them, like you're supposed to do. So they come out delicious. Yum. And you'll know you've cooked them correctly when you can do this. Cheesy, delicious -y. and you burn your fingers. Then you get a little marinara sauce, some ranch, some blue cheese, whatever you like. You dip it in there, and it is delicious. Now, for my favorite part of the video, 
well, this is the favorite part. I got to eat some. So you get to see the part of me actually eating it and giving me the the uh, review on if it's Doritos, Cheetos, Chicharronas, or just regular breading is the best breading for mozzarella sticks. Stay tuned. All right, now for my favorite part of the video. I get to try the food. Now, so we have Cheetos, Doritos, uh, pork rinds, and just a regular breading. Let's see how they all turned out. I'm gonna save the Cheetos for last because I'm really hoping that's gonna be delicious. So I'll just do the regular breading one first. These are so much better than anything you're gonna get at a uh, at a restaurant, especially kind of like the fast food sit down restaurants that you know these are just frozen back there and they make them real quick. I realize we freeze these before we make them, but that's only for three or four hours, not for three or four weeks. Um, let's try the, I keep wanting to say chicharrones because that's how you say it in Spanish, the pork rinds. Let's try that one. I'll wait till the end to say which one's my favorite, but I already like that one more than the just regular breading. That's really good flavor on the breading. All right, now for the Dorito. That's interesting, that just tastes like, like a tortilla, like tortilla chip exterior, which makes sense. Okay. And for the Cheetos, come on, come on Cheetos. They're all good and they're all really good, all better than anything you get at a restaurant. I'm gonna tell you, it surprises me, but the winner for me is the pork rind one. A little bit crunchier, a little more flavor with it. To be honest, the Doritos and the Cheetos, the Cheetos didn't taste anything like Cheetos. Um, maybe what you could do is use that extra dust of the Cheetos that you use to coat it. Put it on there right after you're done frying it. Maybe get more of a Cheeto flavor or a Dorito flavor that way. But frying it kind of just takes all the flavor of Cheetos and Doritos out of it, which, you know, kind of sucked. I was hoping I was gonna get something super original, but I didn't. But I did find out that pork rinds are delicious. They're all good. All of them are really good. I would definitely do the pork rind again. And the original is really good as well. Um, if you like what we're doing on this video, hit like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends about it, check us out on Instagram, go to our, um, go to our website at partyfoodhero.com, uh, leave any comments or questions down below, and remember, be the party food hero. Chicharro is one.